to use the Pythagorean theorem. This tutorial can be found on our website, mathwarehouse.com slash Pythagorean, where you'll find several other goodies, including more practice problems worked out step by step, and a worksheet and answer key. All right, I'm assuming that you already are familiar with at least the idea behind the Pythagorean theorem, that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What I want to um, do in this tutorial is help you understand how to apply that to solve problems involving right triangles. All right, so just a quick overview of the Pythagorean theorem, a uh, little refresher. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles, and it's normally written a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse, of course, you need to know, is the side that's opposite the right angle. That's always the hypotenuse. So it doesn't matter whether you put A and B here or B and A there. This theorem says that A squared plus B squared equals the hypotenuse squared C squared. So all that you have to remember is on one side of the equal sign is the hypotenuse squared. On the other side is A squared and B squared, the two other sides squared. Right, it doesn't matter which goes first. All that matters is that on the one side is the hypotenuse squared. And if you look at the picture, this should make sense. I mean, you can see that the red line, the hypotenuse, is the biggest line. It's larger than A and B. So you would expect that one to be equal to the sum of the other two sides. It really wouldn't make sense for the biggest side to, um, to not be there. All right, so at the bottom of the page, you can see examples of the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Um, on the left triangle, you see 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Remember the hypotenuse, the side opposite the right angle, is alone on one side of the equation, and the other two sides go on the alternate side of the equation. You can say 5 squared plus 12 squared. You could also, of course, write 12 squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. It doesn't matter, right? Um, and the same down here, um, here's the hypotenuse, 25, opposite the right angle, and that goes all alone on one side of the equation. And one more example, 3 squared and 4 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. All right, so before we move on to try actual problems, just remember one side of the equation is the hypotenuse squared, and the other two sides, whether it's 24 and 7, 5 and 12, 4 and 3, go on the alternate side of the equal sign. Okay, let's try these two problems. And basically, all problems can be broken down into solving for either the hypotenuse or solving for a leg, right? A leg is a side that's not the hypotenuse. But whether you're solving for the hypotenuse or solving for one of the other sides, one of the legs, we're going to follow the same steps. And the steps are, one, to write the formula, a squared plus b squared is c squared. So in this problem, um, right, a, first let's write the formula, a squared plus b squared is c squared. Step two is going to be to substitute. And I would first start with the hypotenuse, right? Identify the hypotenuse first. It's kind of easy because I've been color coding them at the end of the, the tutorial. We're going to try problems that aren't color coded. But for now, you know, the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle, and I color coded it as x, right? So remember, hypotenuse goes all alone on one side of the equation where c is, and 6 and 8 go in for a and b. You could have written 8 squared plus 6 squared equals x squared. Remember, we're, the order doesn't matter here. All right, step three is going to simply be to solve for the unknown. Our unknown is x. It's the hypotenuse. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. Remember, that equals x squared. 36 plus 64 is 100. 100 equals x squared. And then we're going to take the square root of 100 to get x. And that will be, I'm running out of room here, that the square root of 100 is 10. 
Okay, so let's recap. Write the formula out. A squared plus B squared is C squared. The second step, substitute. We're going to substitute 6, 8, and X into A, B, and C. And I always start with the hypotenuse because that's the one that goes all alone. So we've stuck X in for C and 6 and 8 for A and B. And remember, it doesn't matter whether you put the 8 or the 6 here. And finally, solve for the unknown. All right. So now let's try another problem that's still color-coded before we go on to the next page, which is a little more uh, challenging, no color coding. So step one is to write the formula, right? A squared plus B squared is C squared. Step two is to substitute. And here we can say X squared plus 24 squared, right? These are the sides that are not the hypotenuse, equals the hypotenuse, or 26 squared. And then remember, step three is to solve. So this would be x squared <coughs> plus 24 squared. Get your calculator out. And 24 squared is 576 equals 26 squared, or 676. Right, now let's subtract 576 from both sides. We're just solving. And x squared equals 100. I actually just like the last problem. And x will equal the square root of 100, which is 10. Okay, So whether you're solving for a hypotenuse like the first problem or a leg like the second problem, you follow the same steps. You write out the formula a squared plus b squared is c squared. You substitute. You start with the hypotenuse, put that in for the C, substitute in for the two other values, and then just solve for the unknown. Okay, now let's try two triangles that are not color coded. It's more likely that these are the, these are the kind of problems you'll see. I doubt your teacher will color code your problems on your tests. <coughs> and let's just follow our three steps, right? Step one is to write the formula out. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Step two is to substitute. All right, start with the hypotenuse, and if you look at this, hopefully you recognize that 13 is the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle. Then we substitute the 12 and the t in, and remember it doesn't matter over here whether you put the 12 first or the t first. <coughs> Step three is to solve, and 12 squared is 144, plus t squared equals 13 squared, or 169. We're just going to solve for t. And we get t squared equals 25, and to find t, you take the square root of 25, which is 5. All right? Try one more. You know the deal. Step one, the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Step two, substitute. And why don't you take a minute and try to substitute in there mentally. Identify the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is the largest side, and it is opposite the right angle, so it's x. Substitute in the two other values, 48 squared plus 14 squared. Get out your calculator for these. 48 squared is 2,304. Uh, 14 squared is 196. This equals x squared x squared equals 2500 and x equals the square root of that number or 50. So in this case x is 50. All right, so these are the three steps you should follow to solve uh, to solve any Pythagorean theorem problem. Write out the formula, substitute, solve. Um, just remember where there's a and b, it doesn't matter the order because if you had put 14 squared first and 48 squared second, 
it would just be 196 plus 2304, right? Instead of 2304 plus 196, like we did. And order doesn't matter when you're adding. So this is it. This is how you solve Pythagorean theorem problems. If you'd like other practice problems, come to mathwarehouse.com slash Pythagorean. Um, and like I said, there's also a worksheet with an answer key there. Thank you.